Okay. Uh, did you write the test? No, still working on it. Are, are they awesome? <laughs> uh, depends how you want to define the word awesome. Annalise did make a 98, so it was not impossible. I'm guessing you haven't read Thomas and Thomas. No, but Thomas didn't do as good as Annalise. Yeah. Okay, let's go. I is going to be treated as a variable, just like we work with any other, vari other, other variables when we're adding or multiplying or dividing. But I specifically is an imaginary unit which represents the square root of negative 1. Which means if you square I, then you're squaring the square root of negative 1. What happens when you square a square root? It just disappears. It just disappears. So all you have left is negative 1. So here is where we are going to be able to simplify complex numbers that have I in them. If there are exponents involved, we're going to be able to bring it all the way down to where the I completely disappears, or we only have one left. And so let's look at some examples of how we're going to do that. If we are simplifying I here, we know that I squared specifically is equal to negative 1. So what we want to do is figure out how many I squareds are in I to the 20. Ten, thank you. There are ten, right? Okay. Now you have to do it this way because it's not simply saying, oh, it's an even power. Automatically it's a negative one. All right? I squared itself represents negative one. So this is negative one to the tenth power. What do you do when you multiply a negative number an even number of times? What do you get? You get a positive number. So i to the 20th power actually reduces all the way down to positive 1. Yes? That was the question. So i is always 1? That's what we were trying to figure out. Listen, just hold up, okay? As long as the power here is even, you're going to get rid of all i's. And you're going to either end up with a negative or a positive 1, as long as that power is even. Now watch this. Okay. If this can evenly be divided by 2, 2 goes into 20 10 times, which is an even number of times, your final 1 is going to be positive because you have an even number of negative 1s. I to the 38 power is an even power, so all my I's are going to be gone. Okay? But how many I squareds are in 38? 19. And since I squared represents negative 1, I am raising negative 1 to the 19th power. Well, what do you get when you multiply a negative number an odd number of times? A negative. Okay, so once again, notice, the beginning was an even power. All you do is divide by 2. It's even. Right. Okay. Even. It was an even power, so I have no more I's in my final answer. 2 went into 38 19 times, which is an odd number. Therefore, my final answer is negative 1. Here... 20 was an even power, so I have no more I's in my solution. 2 goes into 20 10 times, which is an even number. So I have a positive 1 as the final answer. Okay? Let's do some more before we get to odd. Sorry. I 
positive one will be your answer. Very good. It's an even power, so there's no more I's. 2 goes into 16 an even number of times, so your final will be positive 1. Why is that one different from other formulas? I just didn't go through all the steps. I know, but why is that one end up positive 1? I to the 20th was positive 1. I to the 30th. I to the 38th was negative because 2 goes into 38 an odd number of times. Every time you have I, it's going to be negative 1 on 1. If it's an even power. We're going to look at what if it's like to the third power. Okay? All right. I to the 26th. There will be no more I. Will it be plus or minus? Minus. Ooh. And it will be negative 1 because... Two goes into 26 13 times. So it's negative 1 times itself 13 times, which gives you a negative 1. Now, what if it's an odd exponent? Anytime it's an odd exponent, you're going to have a single i left. But, because we can't do anything with that extra i, but we can take the rest of the i's, and we can find out, is that plus 1 or minus 1? i to the 32nd power will be what? Plus 1. Will be positive 1, because how many times does 2 go into 32? 16, and that's an even number. This is i squared to the 16th power times i, even number, so that's plus 1 i. Or you could simply say I. Every time you have an odd number, it's going to be odd. Every time you have an odd exponent, you will have an I left. I like just one I. Or just, a, just something with I. Okay, now we could put numbers in front of here too. If I had 5I to the 33rd power, the answer would be 5I. Because you still do... Now it's 5 times this, 5 times this, 5 times you this. Get a negative one, be negative one. Then it would be negative 5i. Exactly. Okay? i to the 27th. Odd power. I break it apart, and then I focus on that 26th power. I'll have this i left. I to the 26th, is that plus or minus 1? Minus. Negative 1, because 2 goes into 26 an odd number of times. And I don't have to put the 1, but I do need to put the negative. So that simplifies down to negative I. Now there's a reason we're going through all this, because we're going to start solving equations that have complex numbers in them. But before we can solve the equations, we need to know how to work with them. All right? <laughs> To simplify an even root radical, square root, fourth root, sixth root, eighth root, with a negative on the inside. In the past, we've said there is no real solution, and we were right. But now that we're learning about imaginary or complex numbers, we can find a solution. So the first thing we need to do is to designate that this is an imaginary number. Now, how do I do that? I simply put an I. Notice the negative is gone now, okay? And then I focus on the radical, and I simplify it like I've always done. The I is simply a label saying this is an imaginary number. What's the square root of 25? Uh, 5. So it's 5 times I. We treat I like a variable. It comes after the constant. And that's your answer. Why do we need... What's the point of imaginary numbers? Because they eventually turn back into, if you have enough imaginaries, it comes back to real numbers. Uh, By squaring them and doing all that other stuff. Can you get back to the calculus 